皆さん、こんにちは。Welcome to another、uh, series, another session of Have a Coke and Tea with the Society. My name is Yoshi Domoto. I'm the Executive Director of Japan and America Society at Georgia. I'm so glad that you are tuning in today as we have a special guest、uh, who will be talking about、uh, second language acquisition and all the、uh, wonderful、uh, things that she does to teach、uh, English. To not only Japanese, but also non native, other non native speakers of English. So,、um, so as the name of our program suggests, it is a have a Coke and tea.、Uh, it is a little bit colder today, so I'm actually having got a nice cup of hot tea today.、Uh, but without further ado,、uh, let me introduce、uh, Miss Liz Bigler, who is the founder, owner, and everything. To do with Bigler ESL, and she's also the co chair of the Japan America Society's、uh, Education Committee. So, Miss Liz, hello, hello. Thanks so much for being、Hi. with us today. Hi, thank you. What, what kind of tea are you drinking, Yoshi? I'm actually today drinking jasmine tea. How about yourself?、Oh. What are you drinking? I'm drinking、uh, lemon and ginger tea. So, I'm in, I'm in New York for,、uh, I've been in New York for the fall for various reasons, and it's kind of chilly up here. So, I've, I've gotten into drinking hot tea. So, nice. it's nice to be with you today. Good, good. Well, thanks so much for being with us. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what kind of work you do. Okay, well,、um, my name's Liz Bigler, and I have been in ESL for many years. I was on the JET program way back at the beginning, probably around the time, I don't remember when you were there. I was there before you for sure, probably, but I was there in 1990, I can't remember now, 96, I think. No, earlier than that. But anyway, I was in Japan in the 90s for a couple of years and I got into teaching at that point and I loved it. I had been in theater prior to that, a theater technician. I was not really an actor, but I did lighting and stage managing, which I still do kind of on the side. But I was in, I was doing that professionally for a while. But I, you know, I didn't really love it, love it as a career. And I love, love teaching, which I discovered when I was in Japan. So then I came back and got my master's degree, and、um, I've been teaching ever since then. And I started my own company, Bigler ESL, after years of working. I worked at Seigakuin School, the, the Japanese、um, bilingual elementary school that was in Atlanta for many years. And I taught at a lot of other schools, lots of different kinds of people, adults and kids, and different language backgrounds, beginners and advanced. But I finally decided to just go on my own and start my own company. I want to say about like six or seven years ago. And I've been doing it just on my own for the last four without working in any other kinds of schools. And I love it. It's so cool to be your own boss, you know?、Um, I really love my boss. So that helps, you know? It's me. Get it? Yeah. I'm glad you love yourself, Liz, and、uh, you are the, your, your own best boss, right? So, well, yeah, you know, I mean, when you work in different schools and different places, you often have to do things that you don't think are good ideas or you don't agree with them, or you know what I mean? And if it's your own company, then you can decide that, you know, that doesn't make sense to do it that way. I'm going to try it this way. And then you make mistakes, and you know, it's not like it's all perfect, but、um, you know, I, it suits me well because then I don't, I don't have to follow somebody else. I can make my own mistakes and learn from it and do it, things the way that I like to do them. So it's worked out good for me. Great. Well, we'll, we'll talk more about、um, Big Luria, so what makes、uh, you so unique. Um, but、uh, you mentioned the JET program. It always brings me a smile when I hear that other people were part of that program, just like me, and、uh, they're kind of gone off to bigger and better things and promoting US Japan relations. So, so I'm so、yeah. glad that you were part of the program and you're actually my senpai too, right? So, but、yeah. was the JET program your first connection to Japan or how would you get first connected to Japan? It, I know you have a fun story. It was absolutely the first thing. Do you think that most people listening know what the JET program is? Uh, some may or may not. So, what is the JET program in, a, your, a, in your eye? Well, I think it stands for Japan Exchange Teaching, but it's not really like, you know, a teacher from here goes there and a teacher from there comes here. It's they,、uh, the Japanese government recruits、um, 
uh, English speaking, native English speaking teachers from lots of English speaking countries, not just the United States, Canada, Ireland, Australia, and all those good places. And they bring them to Japan to help the Japanese English teachers in the classrooms. Um, and it's changed over the years, but it's essentially that's still what it is, isn't it? I think. Yes, the, the exchange is basically the teacher, or you no, know, the native English speaker, whether it's from the US or Australia or other parts, um, South Africa, um, you know, they exchange, uh, they're kind of, they teach English and um, kind of their own culture, but they also learn from the students that teach together. Right. So that's that's the exchange part. But, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's a cultural exchange when, when teachers go to Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful program. And at, nowadays it's very competitive. And I've actually been on the selection committee a few times, um, but you know, I always joke that it wasn't that competitive when I went when I applied for it, and that's why they chose me, because I didn't have any background in Japan. I literally did not know one word of Japanese. And I, I just sort of went, applied for it on a whim, because I, I thought I might like to try teaching. And then a friend of mine was like, why don't you apply for this thing to go to Japan? And I was like, Japan, why would I want to go to Japan? <laughs> and the next thing I knew, you know, I had an interview. And the next thing I knew after that, I was sent to Fukui, like rural, Japan. And, you know, I was just like, had one of those Dorothy moments where I'm like, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Oh my gosh, where am I? And, but it was just such a great experience. And this was back in the nineties. So this was before you could look things up on Google or even write emails home. Like I was writing letters with a pen and paper and, you know, waiting three weeks to get a response. Um, but it was, you know, it was hard in that way that I felt very isolated, but also I learned things in a way that, you know, an experiential way that you, you don't learn when you just look everything up and watch videos and stuff like that, you know? And even now, I, I remember the way that I learned Japanese expressions and customs and cultures and things that didn't make sense to me at the time. Like, I don't know if we have time to give examples and stuff. Maybe we should move on. But anyway, it was a great, it was a really um, profound way to be ex exposed to Japan from having no experience with it before. And also as a language teacher, I learned so much learning Japanese from literally from zero being there. Um, it really gave me a lot of insight to how people learn language and you know, the struggles and the difficulties and everything, but also like just how the lights go on when you learn. Wonderful. I know you've come a long way, um, you know, getting uh, connected to Japan through the JET program and kind of uh, what you do now. So, um, so kind of tell us about what Bigler ESL does, some of the services you all offer and what makes it so unique compared to other ESL schools. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, we're sort of a school. I used to have an office. I had an office for about four years in Peachtree Corners. That's where I was based. I'm still kind of based there. But in J June of this year, because of COVID, you know, I had stopped having face-to-face -face meetings with clients. And most of my clients are individuals. Most of the people that I teach are individual, um, either business Japanese business people who are in America for, you know, two, three years, or their wives, and sometimes their kids. I don't teach a whole lot of kids these days, but I love teaching kids. And um, so I, I, but, you know, because kids can go to regular school, they usually get the English that they need there. But I, I have taught a lot of kids over the years. Um, and so I didn't feel comfortable having face-to-face -face meetings when the COVID you know, struck. And so I kind of stopped that. I had been trying for years to get people into Zoom and internet lessons because I thought, you know, when people go back to Japan, a lot of times they'll say, oh, too bad. I wish we could keep studying. And I would always be like, we can keep studying, but it just never happened. People always, even people in town preferred to come to my office even when there was like, you know, weather and traffic and all that stuff. And I would say, let's just hop on Zoom and give it a try. And they would be like, no, I don't want to do it that way. <laughs> so it kind of, you know, it's been a silver lining that COVID sort of made it 
pressed them to say, either you can have no lessons or we can do it online. And I love it. I mean, people have really um, came reluctantly, they came reluctantly to the table, but in a way it's so much better because I can, I can see your mouth, I can see your face, I can demonstrate the ways to pronounce things that you know, if I did that, if I got up close in your face like that in person, Yoshi, you'd be like, oh, get away from me. It would be like creepy, right? Kimochi warui. But on the internet, it's it's easy to do, and you know, there's no traffic, there's no nothing. I can show you the documents that I want you to see, or pull up pictures on Google to show you something that we just talked about that you you didn't know what that looked like or whatever. Um, so you know, now I'm completely online, and I'm loving it. And it's, it's great. So what makes my company different is that I don't typically have, I do teach accent reduction courses and I have coursework and I've developed some courses like in idioms, how to, how to understand, you know, those phrases that just don't make any sense at first. But for the most part, the one-on-one -on -one lessons that I do, we don't really have a curriculum. And so if you go to a school, an ESL school, it'll be like a curriculum, like, okay, this week we're gonna study this, and next week we're gonna study that. And I have found working with Japanese people, they already have some, like every person, whether their level is high or low, has studied English before, whether they were just like, they didn't care or they were really into it. There's some background knowledge there. And so what I like to do instead of saying, okay, chapter one, we just start talking and wherever, wherever I see the gaps to put things together, I want, I want to be able to take what language they have already, the English knowledge that they have and help them put it together in ways that they can have conversations that they can communicate what they want in, you know, business meetings or shopping or wherever. And um, that method works better. It just, it's more personalized. It's more um, tailored to what they need to be able to put things together and actually communicate. I don't really care if they understand the grammatical terms and all that. Neither do they. They don't care. They just want to be able to communicate smoothly. So a lot of it is that. And then we all, I also have started specializing a lot more in accent reduction and I use a technique called the color vowel system that takes all the vowel sounds of English. Like in Japanese, there's only five. In English, there's like 15. And how do you make those? What Japanese speakers tend to do is just sort of like put them into one of the katakana vowel sounds, but then they're not really reaching the other areas, right? So this method takes all those sounds and assigns them to a color and a phrase that makes it easy to remember. It's kind of complicated to explain, but it's very easy to do. And that's that has become something that is kind of the basic uh, piece of what I do with accent reduction. So for everyone tun tuning in, yes, uh, I've seen Liz in action and the, uh, the color coding uh, method uh, is definitely a unique and very easy to understand way of um, kind of teaching uh, kind of yeah. the intricacies of American and I guess English accents too, right? So I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, it's very intuitive, and it's even for people at a very low level or kids, it works just as well as for people at a very high level. It helps them code these words so they can remember how they're pronounced. So. Wonderful, and I know uh, kind of you specialize in teaching uh, English to Japanese too, so I know you have an extensive experience kind of uh, working with the Japanese, so you know kind of the ins and outs of some of the things that you know, they struggle with more, more than maybe others. So, so yeah. definitely, uh, you know, Japanese viewers right now that definitely visit uh, uh, kind of Bigler ESL's website, kind of learn more about it. But you spoke yeah. a little bit about idiomatic expressions and idioms in both Japanese and English. I'm going to go off a little off script a little bit, but okay. so what's kind of one um, idiomatic expression or kind of one cultural um, thing that maybe a lot of Japanese uh, kind of struggle with, um, you know, something maybe, uh, 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 something funny maybe. And then likewise, what's something that kind of you learned in Japan as a learner of Japanese language 
that kind of you learned that that was kind of a, a funny idiomatic expression. Mm. Kind of going okay. Hmm. I should be able to do that first one right off the top of my head, but I'm sort of, I, I, the one that I'm thinking of though, is the opposite where I, when I first started teaching in Japan, before I knew any Japanese or anything about Japanese culture, I was teamed with a young Japanese teacher. And sometimes she would give me the ball and say, you know, you lead today's class and we would plan it. And I would go in there and, you know, do all, you know, my, my dog and pony show, right? Because I didn't really know what I was doing at that point. But, you know, I would think, oh, that went pretty well. We did a game and we played a song and, you know, and then the class would end and the kids would leave and she, or we would leave and she would look at me and go, that was really good. You must be really tired. And then I would think, what? And then I would go to the, I remember going into the bathroom at the school and looking at my face and going, I don't, why did she, like, I don't feel tired. I feel like jazz. Why did she say that? It was always sort of like a, not like a, a comp, it seemed like she was complimenting me, but it wasn't a nice thing to say. You look tired or that's how I read it. You know, like you must be tired. And uh, so I never understood, but I could tell by her manner that it, she, she had a good intent, but I never understood it. And then years later, I, you know, it was just like the light bulb went off and I went, oh, otsukare sama deshita, you know, like, that's what she wanted to say and she was just translating it into english which for people who don't speak japanese it, it it literally means you you have made yourself tired but what that means is you did a great job you worked really hard and so you know years later i thought of her and i wasn't in touch with her anymore but i thought oh that's what she meant so that was kind of cool there were there's so many things like that that i didn't Years later, I like I, I didn't understand it, but I would kind of store it away until the light bulb went off, and then and then I connected the dots and went, oh, that's what it meant. Uh, and then I was just thinking of an, the opposite, something that Japanese people. Oh, now it left my mind. I can't remember what it was. It'll come back to me some. Well, it could kind of go to, uh, both ways too, right? If, if an American or a, a English speaker is you know wanting to tell the Japanese. Oh, um, you do look tired, right? Maybe they are tired, and you they say, would take, it was, you. It was kind of some of this stuff, right? And they'd be like, "Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> right." But uh, funny. Oh, I just thought of something else. This isn't a, exactly a language thing, but um, I I had a student who's an adult student whose wife had a baby. They were living in Atlanta, and they had a neighbor come over and give them a gift, like a you know a rattle or a baby hat or a toy or something i don't remember what it was and he the student asked me what what would be an appropriate gift for me to give to them and i was confused or i was like wait did they have a baby too like why would you give them a gift and it was before even though you know i've been working with japanese people for a long time i'm still learning and I, then it hit me like oh if you get a gift you have to give a gift but for us, for Americans, if he had given his neighbor a gift, that would have been not bad, but just strange. Like, what? why are you giving me a gift? Like I, so instead we would write a thank you card. And when I told him that he was like, what? Like that was really strange to him. So it's, it's not just language, it's learning, you know, customs and cultures and it's really interesting. And I, like I said, I'm still learning, even though it's been, 30 years since i went to japan almost 30 yeah almost 30 years yeah as you said uh when, when you truly um no want to understand i know people from other countries and other cultures it's not just about grammar and vocabulary huh? there, there's a lot of unspoken um uh, even in language a lot of unspoken kind of linguistic uh, kind of cues that you have to know and culture and customs so uh so so one way to kind of be able to kind of learn all of that and kind of the tricky ways is uh, going to Bigler ESL, right? So uh, yeah, yeah, and definitely. I do free like if if anyone out there is interested or know anyone who's interested, I do free consultations. So you know you can call and we can talk. And if you decide that's not for you, that's there's no no skin off your nose, right? We say no skin off my nose. It's a very strange idiomatic expression. It means 
it's fine. So we're getting a little language lesson here already. But um, so, yeah, so we talked about um, a whole lot about what you can offer uh, professionally, but um, uh, you sound and look like, and I know you are a, a very fun person. So tell us a little bit about maybe uh, your hobbies, what you like to do when, when you're not teaching, uh, maybe some of, you know, uh, about your family yeah. and then, yeah, tell us a little bit more about yourself personally. Okay. Well, like I mentioned, I, um, I'm a theater person from way back from even before I started teaching, I was really interested in theater. And, um, so I still do, like, I'll do readings. We just did a, a Halloween reading with um, members of my congregation and I just took a script. It was all on Zoom and just sent it out and assigned different roles. And then I directed it. You know, I just kind of said, oh, you, you know, say it more this way or, you know, like, this is what that person feels like right now. And it was really fun. And so we're doing another one for Christmas. We're doing Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. And I'm involved in some of the local community theaters, although they're all like the theater world is just in a really sad state right now. Um, it's bad enough for people like me who just do it for fun, but you know, people who have their professions in that world um, are really hurting. So I don't know how it will all end up, but anyway. So I like to do theater. I like to, I like to travel. Um, but I, I don't really like the, a lot of the just the tourist stuff. I like to really kind of live someplace else and, and explore it and discover it. And so now that I'm online and my I, I realize that I don't have to be any particular place as long as I have a, a, my laptop and my students don't have to be any particular place. So instead of just trying to recruit people from the Atlanta area. Now I'm teaching people who are in China, who are in Japan, who are in um, here in New York and Atlanta, Texas, and lots of places. So it's, it's really kind of cool. Um, and so I'm taking this opportunity since I don't need to be near my office and my home to explore. And right now I'm house sitting for a friend who um, is in Europe for an extended period. So I'm sort of a rolling stone at this point, and I'm loving it now that my kids are grown. Um, I don't have to be home as much to, you know, make sure everything's cool there. So, yeah, so let's see. Spare time. I don't really have that much spare time, but yeah, just connecting with people. So oh, between teaching and theater and um, traveling and connecting with people, that, that that definitely yeah. is a, a well-balanced, uh, I think, uh, kind of lifestyle that you lead. And yeah. as a Rolling Stone, that's another, I guess, uh, kind of a language or linguistic here that yeah. we need to maybe teach a little bit. But yeah, yeah. it's nothing so. to do with rock and roll either. It's, <laughs> they, they say a Rolling Stone gathers no moss, which means <laughs> if you just keep moving, you're not going to get stale or whatever. Yeah. Well, good. Um, well, um, to close us out, um, mm -hmm. so tell us maybe some of your future goals, aspirations, whether it's uh, kind of on a personal note uh, or and also with Big Larry SL, maybe a future outlook with um, uh, your teaching and classes and the services you offer. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, before I closed my office, I had uh, several teachers working for me. And uh, like I said, what's special about the way that I personally teach is I've been teaching for so long, so many different kinds of people and um, I, especially Japanese people. I've been teaching for so long that I, I can sort of already know what they need before it even comes up. And so I consider that, you know, my personal strength. And I have teachers that worked for me that, um, were very good teachers, but they weren't necessarily as intuitive about Japanese people as I was. And so I, I kind of charge high, like I think for the Atlanta area, I'm probably one of the more expensive um, private tutors, but I did have people coming to me who, who were interested, but they didn't, they couldn't afford to pay that much. So I have some other teachers that um, were also, like I said, excellent teachers, but um, they were a little bit less expensive for these people. And that worked, that system worked out really well. And, but when COVID happened, you know, I lost a lot of my business. So I would like to, um, one of my goals is to kind of build my business back up to where I have more 
people like that and that I can use other teachers to kind of, so it's more like a, a system of teachers instead of just me, even though just me, it's a lot easier to manage just myself than other people. But yeah, I would like to get bigger that way. And I would also like to be able to do more corporate uh, lessons like we Bigler ESL teaches Calpis uh, America down in um, not Peachtree is it Peachtree City? It is. Uh -huh. Is it? I think it, it is. Well, anyway, City, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Peachtree City. I have a teacher down there, Bill Parson, who who continues to do that even though it's online now. And I would love to be able to do more corporate needs. Um, for Japanese companies, not just in the Atlanta area, but anywhere. Um, but now that the world is open to like, I don't have to focus on Atlanta. It's like, oh, okay, where do I begin? You know, trying to find these other things. But that's that's my goal. That's my hope. You know, maybe a year from now, I don't really want to go back to my office. I really love teaching online, uh, but I want it. To, I want to keep building my business more, building my company and my brand. So. If anyone has any referrals out there, send them my way. I would be happy to talk to them. Great. And one last question or maybe uh, opportunity for you is uh, any messages of hope or any words of wisdom you want to share with our viewers? And then how do people get in touch with you? How do people learn more about Bigler ESL? Okay. Well, Bigler ESL we, uh, is my website, B-I-G-L-E-R. I'm not littler. I'm Bigler. <laughs> get it? BiglerESL.com, um, um, and you can find me through there, or you can find me through the Japan America Society, which is we had didn't even talk about that. I love I love being a board member of the Japan America Society, and um, messages of hope. Like I don't know, it's it, it's hard to say this because I know a lot of people are suffering a lot more than me, um, and so I don't want to minimize that at all, but. I always am trying to focus on looking for the good things that have come out of any situation, like making the, the best of the situation, whatever, whether it's, you know, a net good or a net bad, what are some of the good things? And I feel like, you know, it, this whole pandemic has sort of made people more connected to each other, ironically, like it's been so long when I look through my photos and see like the theater gatherings and everybody hugging and Christmas parties. And I used to have for many years, this will be the first year in about 10 years that I haven't had a, a Christmas cookie exchange with all my Japanese, you know, ladies, lady um, students. Um, and that's really sad, but you know, the way that we've connected through social media and all, at least me and my friends and colleagues, um, like you, Yoshi, I mean, I feel like we're, we've connected more during the pandemic than we ever did before. It. <laughs> but that's partly because you're like the energizer bunny, just like never stopping, you know, making all these events and everything. But, um, you know, and like teaching online, I, like I said, I, there are things that stink about it like i can't you know i can't have everybody talking at once in a choral reading or something there's a lot of things that are bad about it but there's a lot of things that are good about it too so i guess i would just challenge people to try to try to see the good things and then maximize on them or you know like see if you can make them go with those instead of dwelling on the things that are bad but again like i hate to say that because you know, like actors or people who work in, you know, restaurants and stuff like that. Like that's might not be, that might not work for you, but just in general, you know, to just to try to see the good things that have come up. Great. Thank you so much, Liz, Liz Sensei. And um, you, you hear to hear everyone, um, you know, make the best out of any situation, certainly these challenging times right now. And then uh, visit, yeah, BiglerESL.com to learn more about all of the services that Liz Sensei and her company offers, uh, including uh, customized uh, instruction in English uh, lessons uh, for uh, Japanese people and other international people too. So yeah. thank you again, Liz Sensei, and then we'll see you thank next you. time. Thank you, thank you. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu, everybody. <laughs> and thank you so much, Yoshi. Great, Enjoy take care, too. be safe. Bye-bye.